for joining me today. I'm Colleen Klimzak. I'm an organizational and productivity coach and a certified professional organizer. I own Peace of Mind Professional Organizing, LLC. Since 2003, I've been helping my clients live better lives through organizing and organizational and productivity coaching. I support my clients and my community with coaching, in-person and virtual organizing, my weekly podcast called Your Organized Life with Colleen Klimczak, a free weekly virtual productivity session called Finish Line Friday, a free weekly email newsletter, and regular content on Facebook and Instagram. I also offer presentations and professional development in groups and companies. And coming soon, I'll be launching a membership circle. Want to finish strong with me this week? Join me for Finish Line Friday every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central for a two-hour productivity session. Drop me an email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or follow the Zoom room link on my Instagram or Facebook pages. Welcome to Your Organized Life, episode 78. So I'm sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar and I have my own new microphone at my desk at home because I had to do it for that recording thing that I was, I'm looking at my producer for this. And this feels different <laughs> now that I have, now that I have mine that I sit with in my desk now, it's like, okay, yours is way cooler, Chris, just so you know. So much better than mine. Um, okay. So tell me if it's just me because, hey, maybe it is. But the month of May asks a lot of us, doesn't it? May has a crazy busy event schedule. I don't happen to have anybody graduating from eighth grade or high school, college. Um, A friend of mine's daughter is graduating from law school like yesterday, I think. Or, Or, you know, we don't have that or any other major life events for my sons this year. I understand, though, for those who do. I was reflecting over the weekend with two of my sons that two years ago this week, in a nine-day span, the Klimzak household had an engagement in Michigan, a college graduation in Indiana, and a high school graduation in Illinois with all the assorted extra events attached with those as well. Oh, and a round of COVID and two of my three sons started new jobs. Yeah, it was a little nutty. Even without all those things this year, May is just busy. I was talking to my accountability partner on our bi-weekly call last week, and she mentioned aptly that the pace is wearing on her. Yeah, I agree with that a lot. The pace is wearing on a lot of us because May asks a lot of us. Even just the typical stuff, even if you don't have those big life milestones, my body clock is shifting from hibernation mode to active mode. It's brighter earlier and energy has returned. If anybody has seasonal affective disorder, you know what I mean. So brightness has returned. We're up earlier and out later in the evening because it's still daylight. The biological shift to be out and about and do more things is a thing, right? Days are longer. Temperatures are warmer. I planted a container garden, so I need to switch my habits this time of year to factor in watering every day. I also shifted my routine to add daily walking into the schedule first thing since it's brighter earlier. Energy shifts, right? Routines shift. Last week, while I started to work on this content, I was driving to pick up my college-age son from college to move him home until August. I was saying to a friend that even though it's only, you know, it was 56 degrees and raining when I started this content, it is still the beginning of our summer. It might be the first, you know, two weeks of May, but to us, it's summer. It's that shift to summer for us because John's moved home and it's his summer break. It might not look like summer, but the schedule and the household and the routines shift for summer. And then there's the end of year school extravaganzas. I had the opportunity to address our, you know, middle school NJHS last week. What a great group of kids. I am telling you, those kids should be so proud. But there's end of the year concerts, graduations, ceremonies, and then there's the weddings and graduation parties. Yeah, the schedule is revving up. We have a wedding in our family the end of May in Baltimore, and that's a really big deal. May is often a month of transitions, so it doesn't surprise me that historically, May is officially called Revise Your Work Schedule Month. 
We change our schedule for biological reasons in response to the seasons and shifts in daylight. We change our schedules around our different roles in our lives. I don't have children in elementary school or high school anymore, but because of my board of education work, I'm still attached to the academic schedule. And our last day of classes is in the first week of June. So all of that being said, why? (laughs) Why are we talking about this today, right? So what I have been working on personally and what I've been working on with a couple of my clients as well is how to manage all of this. And all of this is great, but it is still a lot to manage and adjust. So the first step, of course, is the awareness that it's happening, right? Awareness that it's that time of year. Awareness that, thankfully, hopefully, things are also wrapping up at the same time that other things are getting started. You know, when my kids were younger, we would add in spring and summer sports, and then the school year responsibilities would slowly taper off. But for a while there, typically in May, we had twice as much of everything going on. So maybe you have responsibilities, too, that only happen in the winter. I know many groups and meetings take summer breaks. My choir at church takes a break for the summer. Responsibilities shift, and in some ways, the load is lightened, which is nice. So again, we start with awareness, identify that it's happening, and that is happening to you. And maybe then we can take these shifts and transitions as opportunities to make changes, if you'd like, in the direction you want to make them. So first identifying what's going on, and then making the process our own. In my call last week with my accountability partner, she mentioned that writing up the report for our call helped her review what she'd accomplished in the last two weeks and also what she hopes to accomplish in the next two weeks because that's how the process works for us. And I mentioned the same to her, that the wall full of post-it notes that had been next to me as a product of a very professionally busy couple of weeks had been finally taken down as the tasks had been completed and the wall was clear right? So we need to be aware that it's happening and also start the structure and the planning to um, make changes for ourselves. So my suggestion would be to start with awareness. Next, grab a calendar, either paper or digital. In my accountability call, I stated I would pull out a paper calendar so I can visualize the next three months. There's just something to be said about having it all laid out in front of me. I really do benefit from seeing it, you know, big picture, right? So mapping out when we travel maybe in the next three months. You know, for us, we've got that wedding coming up. We've got a week in Michigan. Um, We're already, you know, putting on the calendar when I'm taking my college student back to school in August. We've got some concerts in there and some other scheduled events. And we want to put those big boulders on the calendar. We want to put those big blocks on the calendar to make sure that the big stuff gets taken care of, right? To help us determine what we can say yes to and also what we have to say no to as other events come up. Also grabbing that calendar, grab the to-do list as well. We really need to get all of the ideas for the next couple months out of our brains and into a usable form. Yes, now is the time. So as much as I liked that, you know, post-it note wall, it wasn't terribly useful for me. So I needed to take it down and put those items that were on those different post-it notes uh, onto my to-do list in a timely manner attached to dates so they would actually be more likely to happen, right? So do that for yourself as well. And, you know, there are going to be tasks attached to those transitions. I spoke to graduating eighth graders and their parents last week, right? Right. They're headed off to high school in a few short months. And those kinds of transitions have other tasks and steps attached to them. The book list. Perhaps they have summer reading for their high school freshman year. Maybe there's a supply list. What do they need, you know, clothing wise? If they want to play a fall sport, I'm pretty sure that sports physicals and fall sports training starts probably in August. So again, That's closer than we think. I know no one likes to hear that, but it's the truth. So we really need to make sure that those items are on the calendar now and we can kind of tackle them as we go this summer so it doesn't end up an emergency the last couple days before everything gets started. And then what do we need to do to start to embrace that new calendar or schedule, right? Um, 
we were talking with my son and apparently he and his roommates forgot to determine who was bringing a toaster for their apartment in August. So adding a buy a toaster task on the to-do list needs to happen for us so they have a toaster. There you go. So these are all important things to think about and they're kind of the next natural progression of these major lifestyle shifts now. We should be busy enjoying the successful ends of some things, but remembering that with the ending of one thing comes the beginning of something else and the requisite attached tasks. My son moved home for the summer after a really great semester, but in August, he will move into an apartment and we will need to do some planning now for that then. We have to start looking at what does he need to be more independent when he moves into his apartment in August. And that is not a question to ask in August. That's a question to ask now or as soon as possible. At least when your mom's an organizer, I guess it is. So again, just some things to think about. So to recap, be aware that transitions are happening. Make some decisions for yourself about how you want things to go. Grab a calendar and look forward to the next three months-ish. Celebrate the milestones, absolutely, but look ahead. Grab that to-do list and make some notes and plans to make the transitions go more smoothly and also to set yourself up to succeed when transitions come again. I am wishing you a great May and a great start to your summer. Support around planning for life's transitions is what productivity coaching is all about. If it's time to invest in yourself and explore coaching for organizing and productivity, I would love to hear from you. Drop me a line via email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or message me through any of my social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Thanks so much, and I will talk to you next week.